Welcome to another episode of the Africa Podcast. This is a episode that is part of a special series that we are doing in partnership with the Art Center at NYU Abu Dhabi. And today's conversation is about the incredible performance, What the Day Owes to the Night, um, choreographed by uh, Hervé Koubi, who is joining us today. Um, Hervé is of Algerian roots, uh, grew up in France where he studied biology and dance at the University of Aix-en-Provence uh, before graduating as a pharmaceutical doctor in 2002. After deciding to concentrate on dancing career and graduating from the Rosella Hightower School of Dance in Cannes, uh, Kubi gained professional experience as a dancer before creating his first project and collaborating with Guillaume uh, Gabriel for his, all his projects and more recently also with Faisal Hamlet. Uh, Kubi, thank you so much. Uh, Irving, uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's really a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me also. So you're calling us from uh, Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Is that right? Yes, we are. Of course, yes. It's the very first time we, we are in Abu Dhabi. Uh, um, yeah, so, so, so thrilled to be there. Yeah, yeah, really. V very nice. Um, so I'm curious, I'm curious, today's conversation is about um, what the day owes to the night. Um, maybe if you can um, tell us a little bit about what it feels like to prepare and perform this in Abu Dhabi. Uh, good question, because um, everywhere we perform, we used to perform, uh, I think um, we work with the same, um, we pay the same attention for, for the work. And I think we, we try to be the best work as possible. Um, we perform in New York, in Abu Dhabi, or in a little uh, small ville, small city in, um, in France. Uh, for me, it's exactly um, the same, um, same bet, to, to, same bet to, 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 to meet the, the, the audience and to, to make something um, singular uh, each time, something new for each um, performance. Um, so, of course, we are in, in the place for the first time, so it's, that's the reason why we are excited. Um, and we really hope that the audience here um, uh, enjoy the, the show, we hope. Uh, <laughs> so, some, audience are, uh, some audiences are a little bit different, so uh, perhaps we... we uh, we are no, not not frightened, but we are um, a little bit stressed to 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 be sure that here the, um, this performance will be received well, uh, something like that probably. So, very nice. That's all. Very very nice. So what I'm, I'd love to do is play a little bit of a trailer um, that is on the Art Center YouTube channel. For those listening. Um, so this will give a little bit of a back uh, behind the scenes of what this incredible, very athletic performance looks like. So let's watch a little bit of this first. What some people may not know is the the play what uh, or the performance what the day owes to the night is inspired by in some part by the book um, by Yasmina Khadra what the day by the same name what the day owes to the night. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind the performance and behind the um, the piece? Well, it's um, this creation is uh, probably a dialogue um, between the two seashores uh, in, in the Mediterranean basin between Algeria and France, between uh, Maghreb and Europe, Occident and Orient. Um, and the reason why I, I, I use this title uh, when I told about my 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 own history. Uh, in Algeria, in a French institute, I remember a, a student, an Algerian student, who uh, gave me an advice and he told me, you should read a novel, What the Day Owes to the Night, uh, of um, Yasmina Hadra. And 
uh, as soon he told me the title, for me it was the title of the, this creation uh, uh, I wish to do with these Algerian dancers. Because at the beginning, uh, I only have in my team only have uh, Algerian dancers. Now I have dancers from all around Mediterranean Basin. Some of them are Algerian, Morocco, Moroccan, um, but also from Italy, from from everywhere. Um, yes, yes, uh, indeed. It's not um, an adaptation. It's not an adaptation of the novel, not at all. Uh, I, I'd also say that um, Yasmin Hadra, uh, now we are friends. <laughs> I remember the first time I asked him the, to be allowed to use this title. Uh, uh, he came to see the performance after two times, and now we are very friends. Uh, I'm very proud of, um, to, to know this great man, great uh, writer. Um, and I'm sure that we, the, the beginning, the reason why he wrote uh, the, this novel, exactly the same reasons who pushed me uh, to make this creation, probably. It's the same, um, same beginning, the same point, um, uh, same point of view to start this creation, yes. Amazing. Uh, but um, we 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 kept the metaphoric meaning of the of the novel for sure. So the same, the beginning, the same reason. Um, but after really the something um, between the two seashores, when when you um, when you have this title, what they owes to the night, I think it's a beautiful echo, something like that, with. Um, historic situation, the political situation, the geographic situation between these two countries. Um, it was beautiful and poetic title, I think, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about, about the structure of the, of the performance? Um, so there's 13 dancers on stage. Um, I'd love to know a little bit about the vision uh, of the performance, the initial vision compared to the final product. Did you always have this idea of this is the music? It's definitely thirteen dancers. Th these are the um, this is what the wardrobe looks like. Um, I'd love to know what the vision was from the beginning and if how different that is from what what it is now. Uh, at the beginning, I, I really want to um, together probably the two seashores. Uh, it's probably linked with my own history because. Um, I have a 100% uh, Algerian roots, but I was born in France, and I discovered when I was 25 that uh, all of my origins, all my ancestors come from Algeria, and I ignored it. It was a shock when I 25, I discovered. Of course, I, I, um, I knew that uh, my parents was born in, in Algeria, but uh, I was sure that all my ancestors come from uh, uh, France, somewhere in France. And not not at all. Um, for so uh, we have to know that between Algeria and France, we there there, there were there was a, a war, a, an independence war, very hard. Every war is uh, is hard, is awful. Um, but at the end, Algeria and France um, are still linked. Um, it's like that. You can't do. You can't do by by another by another way. You can't do by another way. Uh, it, it's like that. Um, One hundred um, and half century. Uh, Algeria was a district of France. So um, you you can't cut it suddenly. Yes, there's a lot of um, link between the these two countries. Uh, and in the performance, you see um, some uh, a parallel. A parallel. Um, it's a story of go and back between Orient and Occident, between France and Algeria. Um, for example, where about the, the music, uh, there's some music um, from the Arabic world, but you have also some uh, uh, music from from Occident. Um, uh, I use two two music, uh, one from uh, Jean uh, Sebastian Bach, uh, another one from Vivaldi. So, and it's a long way uh, a trip. I don't know. This performance is, is a kind of uh, a path. Um, 
uh, between the two seashores. And uh, I built the performance uh, by this way. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, Guillaume, uh, uh, tell me to, to, to tell you how I met the first team from Algeria. Oh, uh, nobody invited me in Algeria. Nobody uh, in France uh, proposed me to go in Algeria to make something. I was completely alone, completely, uh, with my little bag. I never, never saw the, this country. Uh, it was completely unknown. And I remember I threw an, a casting um, announcement uh, on uh, internet, on a social network. Uh, uh, and I remember there's a lot, a lot of dancers who came at the, um, at the casting. Uh, there's, um, there was um, 250 dancers, and mainly dancers from um, street dance, uh, some acrobats also. Uh, it was um, and with a very good level, really beautiful techniques, beautiful skills, um, wonderful um, moment for me to to meet this first team. It was um, absolutely magical. Um, and I remember me, I, I learned to dance in a, in dance school, uh, and it was suddenly for me um, a kind of little revolution in my company, um, in my work, because suddenly I decided to, to, to go on my way, but with um, dancers who didn't learn to dance in academic way. I don't know if I was clear. Yes. Um, uh, and I think uh, I found, I hope, uh, I hope the audience will see something a little bit new because at the end, you don't see a, a, a breakdance show, not at all. The, um, the style is completely contemporary, contemporary, I think, really. And I only keep um, from the breakdance only the, the spins uh, on the hands or on the head. Yeah, it's amazing um, how, how many different styles are, um, are present. I'm curious, um, is this the first time you've really merged these different styles and tried to sort of um, use uh, quote unquote untrained dancers, um, or I should say not classically trained dancers in um, such an environment? Um, I remember every time I, all, since my beginning, when I start to my first creations, I always love to have uh, foreign uh, dancers, first of all, and I, I've already had some experiences with um, hip hop dancers, but hip hop dancers from France. And it is not the same at all, not the same at all, probably because in France, the, um, there's um, um, a, um, a, a, a dance field in France with the institution, French institution, and we have some borders in France. So when you have uh, uh, hip hop dancers from France, uh, I remember when I started this project in 2009, uh, I remember the, the dance, French dance, hip hop dancers, um, when I showed the, the, my propositions, they, they were completely blocked. They, they are not ready. And now it's, it's changing, really. You have more and more uh, contemporary propositions in the hip hop uh, hip hop company um, uh, in France, um, but in 2009 it was absolutely new, um, and I think um, in Algeria there's no structures. The dancers are um, have no room to uh, no places official places to to rehearsal or to train. Um, um, yes, to, to train. Um, and that's the reason why they are perhaps rough, but they are completely sincere when they start to move. And they are not afraid to make something new, to make some new movements. They don't have, they don't judge um, something new. They are completely uh, open to every proposition. For me, it was a gift, an, op an incredible opportunity, because um, I, I, wa I was able to, to make them uh, come toward my 
own techniques, my own vision. And at the same time, I use the uh, um, their skills, the um, um, uh, virtuosity. Virtu in French, we say virtuosity. I don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. Right. I keep that, that um, physicality also for, for, from them. Um, and at the end, I hope uh, it was um, something a little bit new. I, 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 I really suppose. I felt like that. I remember the first time I show uh, I showed the um, the, the show uh, the front an audience. I remember the reactions of the professional and the audience. It was really new. Uh, really, I remember to see these dancers move like contemporary dance and suddenly uh, spin on the head and do some acrobatics movements um, that they don't with without any. Um, 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 gimmick from uh, hip hop dance, yeah, yeah. No, I think they it merges really beautifully, and it's hard to see where contemporary ends and and hip hop begins. It's a, I think you do a really good uh, a really good job with that. Um, can we talk about the wardrobe for a second? Um, I I feel like the 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 garments that the dancers are wearing are very effective, especially when they're spinning on their heads. Um, you know, it's uh, <laughs> I was watching it and we realized there's this it's it's almost like they're Sufi Sufi twirlers when they're on their head, um, and that's because of the the wardrobe. Um, and where did that vision come from? Uh, so fortunately, the costume maker is close to me. He's a Guillaume. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps uh, uh, Guillaume could, could answer. Uh, of course, I asked him uh, a costume between the two two cultures, between Orient and Occident. So it looked like uh, Hellenic costumes, perhaps. But uh, in, of course, you you note that um, uh, it looked like Sufi, but uh, um, <laughs> up, upside down. <laughs> But I let Guillaume explain the, the process of, of, of the costumes. Yeah, yeah. So for, for the process, it was uh, we, we wanted to have something at the same time very pure, very simple, and that could also go with all the movements of the dancers. Uh, Hervé, in his process of writing dance, uh, used a lot the Arabic calligraphy and all the movements that Goes. So, uh, of course, there is um, the kind of dress of the, that Sufi style that follows the movement. And it was, it was um, great to, to see upside down what it is. And you don't spin on your feet, but you spin on your head. But that means maybe the same thing, the same try to go up. And um, we wanted the costumes to go with all the movements, with um, all the acrobatics, but also we wanted the costumes can also respond to the, the choreographic process of Hervé um, and that the costumes could also by themselves do some calligraphic moves in, in the air. Um, and we wanted something pure also because we, we thought that this project could be like a kind of desert ritual, a ritual of the desert. And we wanted something um, white, and but white is not to, to say white on white, but is also to emphasize all the different shades of skin of the dancers. And we wanted to, to also show that there is no one North Africa. There's a multi, multiplicity of skin, of tones of skin, and then of cultures in North of Africa. And the white down was an opportunity to put this in light. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's very, very effective in that way. Thanks for uh, that, um, that insight. Um, Hervé, I have a, I have a silly question. No, no silly question. No, no, no. Never a question is never silly. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask it then. You're giving me the confidence. How do you choreograph something like this? Is it 
a big vision. You have the vision of the entire piece, and then you sort of zoom into section by section by section, and you're trying to create the big painting. Or are you painting every segment one by one? You know, um, um, when I create, uh, when I rehearsal, when I prepare before the first day of rehearsal, uh, I have to be honest. Uh, it's a very intense moment, each new creation for me. Um, uh, I see with my friends, choreographers, they, they, they used to create um, almost each year. For me, I need three years to, um, to prepare uh, each creation. And uh, I, I need time, a lot of time, more than, more than usually. Um, and I have, I have to confess that I can give you some piece of answers, but not completely. Because when I start a creation, uh, I really don't remember how uh, this thing or this other thing came uh, in the choreography. Um, it's something so intense. So I prepare, I need time to prepare the, the choreographies. I, um, I make the choice of the music before, for sure. Um, I have so much doubt about my work when I prepare every creation, really, really. Uh, and there's something very instinctive, really, when I start to, to rehearsal with the dancers in front of me. It's a go and back between them and me. Um, so um, I have some ideas for sure. Some it's a little bit like a painter. I um, I choose the, the colors I want to use. I, have, I don't know what to say in in English. I have a palette. In French, we say palette. It's yeah, clean. that's right, palette. No, no, palette. That's right. Okay, palette. I have a palette of colors, and I decided to. And perhaps I have um, directions, some dynamics directions. Uh, I love to work about the spacings. It's very important for me, the movement, of course, first. Um, but uh, after uh, the, 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 the field I, I love to work is uh, about the spacings, the global spacings, and the dynamic, the, um, the relationship with the music also. Um, for example, I, I don't do, uh, there's no count in my choreographies, no count. And um, however, the, um, the choreography uh, is very wrote. I don't know what to say. So in French, we say it's écrit. It's wrote. It's written. It's written. Sorry. It's written. Uh, I don't know if we say the same. In, yeah. In, in, yeah. In it's written. But um, I, it's not the good word, but I, I, I force my dancers to get together anyway. So they have to take care, to pay attention with the other dancers in a very small space. Uh, and I, I love the, 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 this, um, um, cette façon de travail, this way to work um, is to put some limits, some borders, um, to give some indication to my dancers and, and to see what's happened. A little bit like a, an alchemist, really. I work like that. Sometimes it's work on, sometimes not. But uh, and uh, I say an alchemist, but I prefer to say uh, like a gardener. Really, really, really. So you never know exactly. You know what you have to do. You have a structure, of course. But at the end, you have to adapt. You are, you have a, a, a live material. The dancers are alive, of course. And it's a um, point of view very interesting for me. And I have to respect it. So for that, uh, I don't like the idea to prepare everything, part one, part two, part three. Some choreographers do it very well. Uh, it's not a critic. Me, I prefer to have some ideas, some directions, and to keep flexibility. The same fle flexibility I will ask to my dancers on stage to get together, to be ready for everything. And perhaps uh, when you work on, like that, you are more fragile. You have to have uh, humility, but you are more fragile. And it's strange, but with this fragility, I think my dancers are, at the end, at last, stronger, really. 
What do you hope uh, audiences take away from a performance like this? Um, and is, is each audience different? Um, until now, and, until now, the audience uh, all, are always welcome our performances, really. Uh, uh, um, and uh, I think, I, I hope they, they will make the same way, the same path, the same travel during one hour of the performance. Uh, is, is not to enjoy the performance uh, like um, uh, an object, like uh, 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 an object, uh, uh, a thing, but like an experience, like a, a real travel from the beginning until the end. I really hope the the the, the audience who could could make the the journey with us to to see it differently. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, this is such a, it seems like it's such an intense performance, emotionally intense performance. Um, and I feel like some of the themes that you're talking about are, um, are universal, but feel different in different contexts. Um, you know, I would imagine that a performance like this in, in Abu Dhabi um, and in the Gulf where there is so much mixing of cultures um, feels feels similar but very very different um i wonder if you expect that the performances uh in abu dhabi are going to feel uh are going to be a little different and the audiences may react differently uh, i don't know but yesterday and the day before um in new york uh, in the university of abu dhabi we we met a lot of students um, with different meetings um uh, you asked me about um, my feelings uh, 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 about our performance for the first time in Abu Dhabi. Um, there's, uh, it's very rich because you have people, students who come from everywhere in the world. So probably I'm very excited um, uh, uh, about it because um, I can't wait to see how different point of view, different students from different origins probably different point of view, uh, will see the performance, will see, um, will feel the, the journey. Uh, I hope they will enjoy tomorrow between Orient and Occident. Because it, it, it's that, uh, what they also the night, it's um, go and back between the two civilizations, the two cultures. I want to ask a, a little bit about the dancers. How, you know, how much of the original cast is still with you? Um, and how, you know, what's the journey of some of these dancers when they, when they join the, the company? So now we are the three, the third or the fourth um, generation of dancers uh, in this project. Um, usually my dancers stay in my company um, a minimum five years. Uh, it's long, it's a long collaboration. Um, Yes, I, I think that this project um, is often, um, uh, um, I think to come in a company and generally for a dancer is, is a very important moment already. Um, uh, and we we have the chance to, to draw a lot um, and they, they can earn their own money. Um, they can live with their the money they, they, they earn with the, the company uh, correctly. It's not easy huh, everywhere in the world, but with us it's possible. So suddenly they are completely professional dancers. Um, yeah. it's, a, um, it's a real moment, a, a real and in, an important moment for, for, for them, uh, sure, for sure. Um, most of them, not everyone, but most of, but most of them uh, are, didn't expect to be uh, uh, professional dancers. They dance only in Algeria, the first generation, but the second and the third one from Morocco, it's exactly the same. They dance because they love it. Um, and suddenly there's this, um, uh, cette rencontre, this, this meeting with me, and they realize they can do with their skills, they can do something in their life with their, with their passion of dance. Um, uh, I love also this point of view to, to make a kind of revelation with some men who are not dancers, 
and revelate themselves with dance. Really, really. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, the the sort of hip hop and breakdancing culture in France. Um, my understanding is that it's very much dominated by North African uh, dancers, and that it's in many ways sort of like a North African art form in Paris. Am I right about that, or am, am I wrong about that? If I understand well, you, you said that when you have been in Paris, you saw there's a lot of uh, uh, hip-hop dancers uh, who have uh, Maghrebin roots in France. That's it. Is that, it's yeah, exactly. It's true. It's true. It's like that in the 80s, there's 40 years ago, um, all these French people uh, who came from uh, the immigration uh, start to, um, to see what's happened in America with uh, hip hop culture and embrace, completely embrace this culture. Yeah. Uh, in France, the French institution, perhaps, uh, I don't want to say something wrong, but probably to, for political reason and social reason, uh, make the choice to put up this culture in France. And for example, to propose to the hip hop dancers to go in the theater. It's a choice, it's a choice that America didn't do, it seems. But in France, there's a real political uh, wish to mettre en avant, to go front, to, to put front, to put front uh, this, um, this aesthetic, this um, culture, the urban yeah. culture. Yeah, yeah, really. And of course, in the periphery districts in France, in the big city in Paris, Lyon, in the north of France, in Marseille, in, in these uh, suburbs where there's a lot of um, people uh, who come from the immigration from Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's the reason why. But um, thank, uh, sincerely, I, I, um, it's real. We, we can say that. I think it's a verite, a, 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 a truth. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not. I don't think it's interesting. But because now the the hip hop dance and the urban cultures are completely open, and I really think that. Um, in the audience, in the theaters, all around the world. Now it's a technique, a real techniques. Um, and we don't pay attention uh, about, um, not for the bad reason, but now uh, you are not necessarily from uh, the, tu n'as pas nécessairement des quartiers périphériques pour pratiquer la danse hip-hop et pour faire une compagnie, même s'il y en a encore beaucoup. But now you don't necessarily come from the suburbs of immigration or the social less uh, less helped um, quarters. Uh, now you can do hip hop wherever you come from and whatever social class you you come from. Yeah, but I think it's a, a beautiful way that the hip hop dance did in France. That start in the this kind of district and now something very popular and open and also almost uh, I I wish to say almost universal. It's a technique like classical ballet, like the modern jazz, uh, some hip hop dance. It's only a technique. Yeah, for sure. Now it's a very interesting. I, um, and probably probably it's the, the, the new popular dance. When you see the, in the 19th century about ballet classic dance, um, the, all the st a lot of steps, not all, but a lot of steps come from the popular dance, the traditional folkloric dance. Uh, I think the, the ballet of the 21th century probably uh, will grow and keep evolving, 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 evolving yeah. um, uh, with the, the contribution of um, hip hop dance. Probably, I'm me. I'm convinced, really. Yeah. How much um, you know? Hip hop, uh, hip hop dance has many different facets, right? It's uh, there's one big 
there's one big sort of term hip hop, but there's popping and there's locking and there's the, all this stuff that comes out of funk. And then there's the, there's break dancing. And then there's, there's all these different um, genres. And now, the, and now the new styles also. Mm. And, and new styles as well. Right. And, and it's regional. There's stuff that comes from, you know, uh, New Orleans and stuff from uh, France and uh, Houston and <laughs> London and New York, all those different styles. Um How much uh, is the acrobats, the acrobatic parts of the choreography informed by hip hop or is it coming from some other different place that maybe I'm not uh, familiar with? Because there's so much acrobatics in, in, um, in your performance. Is it coming from somewhere else that maybe I don't know? Yeah, from Capra also. It's very strange Coco in Algeria. There's a lot of Capra. A lot of Capra. Probably when you see the, the seashore, the beach, <laughs> and that also, they don't have any places, official places to rehearsal, to train. Of course, they train to make some acrobacy on the beach. It's probably yeah. for that. And you have some wonderful, incredible acrobats in Morocco and Algeria. Um, very, very interesting to, to see that. So, um, some of them okay. come from more from the acrobacy field. Um, um, and some of them are more come from more from from b-boying. So, me at the end, um, uh, it's not a goal for me. But in my work, uh, I think we we erase completely the borders, um, the techniques borders. Really, uh, it's for that I I I I save you. I need time, probably to to. It's about. Um, It's like when you you cook a, a, a beef. I don't know to say. It's like when we cook a cuisine, we need time to cook. It's like when we cook a preparation. It's like when we cook a preparation. I don't know to say in, 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 in English. It's like when we cook a preparation. 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 It's like when we like a good uh, food which has to yeah. be cooked for days. It's <laughs> Yeah, it's like you're cooking a stew. Like you put all the things in in the big and pot, the end, and eventually it breaks down. Absolutely. Yeah. At the end, you you don't see why the, the this taste and the other tests are are so good together, <laughs> but because yeah. you don't have the, it's, it's very to find the right balance. I think it's my job, really. And I think if I have some qualities, I don't like to say to to, to speak about me about uh, my supposed uh, qualities. But I think uh, uh, it's uh, where I'm not the best choreographer for sure. But I know how to find the right balance uh, at, at, at this point. Yeah, Hervé, let me ask you one final question before we open up to questions from the audience. Um, do you think uh, you could have choreographed this piece 10, 15, 20 years ago? In your in your career, did you have the the vision and the skill set as a choreographer to choreograph this piece 20 years ago? Oh, you, you know, I, I don't know really to be honest. Uh, to, to, to have a career like choreographer, it's a it's a it's a path. It's a long way. Um, You need to have some experiences. You do your first project. Each time I did all my projects, will will all I have inside me really. Uh, I fight um, to keep my freedom. Really, is not easy. And the, the artists who say uh, we are completely free to do what we want, it's uh, it's a liar. No, no, no. But we have to fight to, to, to keep uh, the freedom. I think we have to keep sincerity as much as possible. Um, and I really hope to, to keep that. And from the beginning, I, I, I remember uh, I, I wanted to be sincere and to share with the audience what I felt. Um, and I think I, I keep that all these years um, of career. Um, if I was able to do the same performance at the beginning, I'm not sure. I remember I have already the structure, the um, some some tools in uh, in me to make dance people for sure. 
uh, at the beginning, it was already there, really. Uh, probably the performance discretion is probably better because I, I had already 10 years of experience already when I start this first creation between France and Algeria. And I did some other else after, um, uh, and they all keep in tour uh, this year. I have five creations on tour uh, this year. What's the day of the night? And the creation just after, it was the sequel of What's the Day of the Night, the Barbarian Night, and the first Ama amazing. Of the world is the sequel. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me ask you we do a quick QA. I only want to ask you one question of the quick QA, which is um, who would you love to shadow for a day? Uh, from the past, past or present? Who do you love to spend a day with from anyone uh, from the past? I have an assistant, wonderful assistant. Uh, he's one of the first dancers, the first generation dancers, Faisal Amlat. Uh, he comes from Algeria. I met him in Algeria in 2009. Um, every day uh, um, of free ourselves, of work, we are together. And it's a pleasure to, um, to pass time with him. Uh, um, it's a um, very friendly collaboration. Like um, it's it's like a pro brother for me, really. Ah, pardon. Ah, personnalité ou quelle personne? Bah moi j'allais dire Faisal. Oui, mais c'est. Si. Uh, yes, but uh, I confirm that uh, if I have no for me, okay. Uh, Guillaume told me you don't answer to the question. It's not a personality <laughs> or assistant. But no, no, I understood well the, the question, but no, there's a lot of people, so uh yeah. So I, I can I can choose um the personality with who I, I want to pass one day. There's so much people. Uh, all the artists are, are so interesting. Uh, I love astronomy, for example, and there's some famous astronomer. I would love to meet them, and so um, some philosophers also. Some writer also, uh, and you want to <laughs> that I yeah. tell you uh, my choice? No, I can't. As for that, I prefer to to answer. I love pass a day with Faisal, and sometimes to do nothing, only to speak about our dream and uh, how will be the next creation and how we could do better the next time. Uh, I love that. Amazing. Okay, we have two questions from the audience. The first I, I is from spend all, all my life with, like that. Too. A little coffee. Yeah. Okay, we have three questions from the audience. The first one is from Reem, and it's uh, the question is: What does it mean to the dancers coming from Algeria and Morocco to be in a professional dance company? And do you think it has an effect in uh, Algeria uh, in supporting dance? It's very new for them. Uh, there's, um, that transformed completely their life for sure because suddenly they they come in France, they live in France, uh, they pay their taxes <laughs> in France. <laughs> uh, I remember all of them, almost all of them. Um, when I met them, they they left. They left in left. They were living. They were living in, in their. Uh, parents so um, suddenly they, they they move in france they they have to um, to to work for a dance company professional dance company uh, and they have to rent their own flat it's very something very it's a revolution for each one of them probably uh, and they travel a lot because we are one of the French companies who tour the more in, in France uh, and uh, at the international. So um, it's probably, okay. I, I don't know, I, I would prefer that my dancers answer, but I, I would imagine it's a wonderful opportunity for them, uh, an incredible adventure. Suddenly they, they, they were supposed to stay in Algeria all their life or in Morocco all their life, uh, probably to give up the dance at one moment to, to have an adult life after. And suddenly they meet me and there's this meeting and they, and they change completely their life. Uh, so. Uh, um, okay, great. I think it's often I, I feel that they are very proud to, to, to our professional dancers, really. Amazing. 
Okay, we have another question um, that comes from Lee. Uh, and the question is, what constitutes contemporary dance, quote unquote, contemporary dance from your perspective? How do you define contemporary dance and or what makes something contemporary? Because it's so large. Uh, in France, we... Uh, in France, we, we love to, in, in America also, we love to create borders, to make a definition about techniques. Uh, and that is uh, Limon, uh, that's it, Cunningham, that's it, uh, Marta Graham, that's it, Classical, that's it, Balanchine. But it's interesting because it's true, there's some very specific uh, techniques and very interesting. But if I have to give one definition at the end, it's an auto position. Contemporary dance is when you decide to create your own movement. Uh, you can, uh, uh, I don't I want to say yes, it's a little bit provoc uh, but provocative, but you can steal some techniques from everywhere, but to create your own proposition. Probably is the best for me, the best definition of contemporary dance. Okay, amazing. Um, and then there's another great question from Lee that says, how do you know when a dance is finished, ready to be seen by the public? Oh, it's, uh, it's cynical. It's never finished, Guillaume told me. Yes, of course. And <laughs> me, sometimes, I, I, often I decide to, to put end, to put in end, so, to, uh, a collaboration, um, when I feel that the dancers in, is not there anymore. Uh, it's um, about his enthusiasm, about his health, his technique, if he keeps yeah. training, and mostly if uh, he keeps his, his enthusiasm. His enthusiasm. Okay. It's very, very important to feel that when he's at work on rehearsal with me and on stage, of course, uh, he has to be full to be sincere, uh, it's very important for me. When I feel that the answer is not there anymore, uh, sometimes I decide to, to end the collaboration. It's not easy, not easy because when I told you um, minimum my dancers stay five years with, with the company, it's a long way, it's a long collaboration, it's a, re a real piece of life, uh, uh, and, but I, I, have, I have to do it. Sometimes. Hervé, what about the performance, though? I mean, for example, when you're creating What the Day Owes to the Night, you're working on it in the workshop with the choreographers. When do you say, OK, that's it. Great. We can now perform it. And you stop working on it. At the rehearsal, I, I don't know. I, I think it's not when, when you say like that, it's um, uh, we could imagine that uh, I work only on the shape of the choreography. And it's not only the shape. There's the shape, of course. I, I told you the, the choreography is written, yes. But at the end, the most important is to give the borders to my dancers for pour qu'ils puissent avoir the le, le, la posture, le, 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 le fond. For them to have the mood, the posture, the deep posture to perform on stage the most important so the shape yes it's important but you, for example you have two choreographies two i love to say sentences of movements okay mm -hmm. and at the end for me the most important is not the choreography but the moment between two choreographies how they end how they start the second way to start another mm. day is uh as important uh, as the, the choreography Really, very cool. So it's this work to uh, make them realize uh, that you have to be full in the in the in the performance at the rehearsal. So I never know if they are completely ready. But my job is uh, at the end, at the end, is to be sure that okay, the choreography is done, okay, minimum, but mostly to build everything to make them perform with the right posture, with the right sincerity, something like that. Amazing. Well, 
Hervé, I'm very, <laughs> uh, very thankful that you took the time, Guillaume. Thanks so much for joining us as well. I'm so excited to hear how the performance goes tomorrow and the next day at NYU Abu Dhabi um, at the Art Center in the Red Theater. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, and sorry for my so bad English. Sorry for the audience. <laughs> uh, I do my best, really. Um, but uh, fortunately, uh, Guillaume was so close to me to help me. Um, sometimes I want to say something very precise. It's very difficult with my poor English, but I really hope you enjoy this moment, and I really hope you will enjoy the, the performance this evening or tomorrow evening. Really, I thank can, you. I can't Again. wait. Thank, thank you so much. You.